Hi, so uh, this video is about my journey a little bit. And this has been a rough, a rough journey for the last couple of years. I know COVID has affected so many people. Has helped, hurt, killed so many people. Um, so many people have suffered in silence and alone. And uh, that's difficult. It's difficult to do. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I was living in in North Carolina and um, things were running smoothly and then I wanted to be closer to family um, I needed to help people out you know with certain things health wise and, and otherwise and uh I try to always go where I'm needed, you know, and grow where I'm planted. <laughs> and I feel like there's something about red flags that people don't quite understand or don't see until after the fact. And it's just so crazy because it's like... When you don't know what you don't know, you don't. Sometimes you don't realize what a red flag could be in so many different ways. Um, when I was planning on moving, you know, I felt like there were so many things that didn't fall into place like I wanted them to or thought they should, or like they needed to, for me and my family to move smoothly, right? And so with that, it was like some things were great. You know, um, we had got up under contract with this nice like Hollywood looking house with, you know, an acre of land and under in ground, swimming pool, just all kind of niceness, right? Surrounded by all kind of land. And so initially, I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's going to work out. Okay. But then you go through this thing called a home inspection. And someone inspects the home before you buy it, before you close the deal. And you have a couple of days, about 10 days usually, sometimes two weeks, to decide if you're going to deal with everything that comes back on that home inspection, if it's good or bad. And I think, th I think things that you got to worry about, red flags, are, you know, if there's... If there's mold or if there's any type of uh, um, structure issues and, um, you know, of course, if there's any water damage, um, things like that is like a big no-no, right? And then termites. Termites is a big no-no as well. Well, you know, when I got the inspection back, um, there was like all of those things in the inspection. So I was like, well, no. I can't do that to my children, right? To myself. So we went ahead and we moved and we moved into a home. And, you know, between different sicknesses and health issues um, that were some very severe, um, last year was rough. Really, really rough. COVID was not our friend. Um, and uh, a lot of family members, you know, have been able to say the same thing, I would say, in different lights or whatever. But anyway, so, um, so even with the move, you know, in that home, I was like, okay, we got to move, we got to find us something. And then inflation happened, right? Inflation had already started, but it hadn't gotten as bad as it got by the end of last year. I mean, it was like so horrible by the end of last year. I mean, the interest rates went from like three point something to like seven, eight percent on the house. 
OMG, so you talking about everything is going up. You got food going up. You got prices on food that used to be, you know, three something, four something dollars. It's like eight, nine dollars now, like double the prices in, in all the stores. Like those are just red flags in life, you know, <laughs> like, like what in the world is going on? Like everything is against you, right? Um, but anyway. Um, after going through so many homes, you know, looking, I felt like I could have been a realtor, you know, just looking for homes and homes and homes. And sometimes that's what you do. You know, you just have to keep looking and you get realtors. And I had so many different realtors trying to work with me and the half of them were not good realtors. Um, some of them were, some of them weren't. Um, and then of course, you know, a lot of them want you to sign contracts and stuff, but then they don't do any work. So then you sign a contract with a faulty realtor that ain't going to do no work to help you find a house and you locked in with them for however long. And that's bogus. Don't ever do that. <laughs> um, but you know, there are some realtors that understand that people are like that in the world. And so they don't press that issue and they will actually help you without you having the contract signed and they will do the most work in the world. There was one particular realtor that was amazing. I mean, he and his family, they have the best realtor company in the world. And I would just say, I just, I'm so grateful for just all his hard work. He wasn't even, you know, I didn't, like I said, I didn't have to sign a contract or anything, but he was, I, I held every realtor up to him as a standard. I, he, and a lot of them couldn't hold a candle to the kind of, you know, depth that he would go into to tell you everything about that property so you can make a good decision. That's what a realtor is supposed to do, right? They're supposed to not just sit in their office and do nothing or just call around and make a few appointments about nothing. They're supposed to actually help you and tell you, hey, you know, this house is actually close to a railroad. This one's close to an airport. This one has a sinkhole in the back. Like they're supposed to tell you what you don't know, especially if you're not there, you know? Um, but God helps some of these realtors, um, red flags, right? All red flags when they don't want to do anything, red flags. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so I will always be grateful for his service, uh, to me and my family and being able to help and assist us. Um, anyway, um, and I do think that, you know, if you're a realtor, you should focus on a certain area. Definitely. And even when I was out of the area, he would still give me information um, if he had time to. And so that that's that's a w good way to do it. You know, I've met some realtors that say they've been in the business 15, 20 years and they suck. But this guy and his company, they actually been in a business for a very long time and they were awesome. Um, lenders, you got to be careful about them, too. And you got to be careful about realtors who suggest lenders to you only to get a credit if you buy a house and the lenders actually suck. The lenders don't care. They don't know what they're doing. They, I mean, I had a, probably the worst lender in the world. Um, and so I just, you know, I encourage you to do, do your due diligence and really try to, whew, you know, um, do some good research, you know, instead of trying to trust people. I think that's where we end up making a mistake and mistaking our red flags for something else because we trust, you know, we're human. We trust, we make mistakes. We trust that a relationship is going to work out. We trust that the realtor is going to actually sell us good stuff. We trust that um, somebody who's got selling us a car is actually telling us the right vehicle and that it actually works. Like we trust in so many different ways. And then, but there's so many red flags, you know, and because of our trust, we don't realize the red flags that we see. We don't realize, oh, well, this not happening when it should have happened or at the time period that it should have happened is probably a red flag. <laughs> you know, um, the fact that, you know, a realtor hasn't even gone and looked at the house, hasn't even seen the house. You know, the fact that the people aren't posting any pictures online of the house it's probably a red flag. You know, it's probably not even worth you going to go see if they're only going to post two pictures. That's just like a profile. If you're down a dating app and the guy only has like one picture or two pictures, it's probably a scam because most people are not going to just post 
one picture of themselves, you know, and then say, oh, I want you to date me, you know, and be wary of have those people who want you to send them personal pictures and y'all just met because first of all, if I don't know you, I'm not going to send you a picture of me like that. That doesn't make sense, especially when you can clearly go online to like Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and you can see thousands of pictures of somebody. Why do I need to send you a personal picture and I don't know you? That's a problem. That's a red flag. So I'm just saying. Um, be wary of the red flags. Um, my experiences here, um, buying houses and stuff, like I said, inflation got so high, cars, I mean, whatever, you name it, there's red flags all around, you know? If daycares have like uh, mold spots in their ceilings and they haven't had took the time to, you know, clean that up or repair repair the the leaks or whatever, that's probably a red flag. Like, if you visit a daycare and you know it's 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 dirty and it's not clean and there's no order, it's probably a red flag. So don't do that. You know, like. If you go to, you know, um, I don't know. It's just so many red flags in the world. And I just want y'all to be wary of all the red flags. Um, and just know that it's okay if you make mistakes because you trusted somebody or you trusted something or someplace, um, your job, whatever. You know, if, if you see a bunch of red flags, just stop and think about it and try to go the other way if you can. You're all in, already in there deep in a relationship or in a house. You already bought it, whatever. And you got to do what you got to do to try to make up for the mistake that you made. But um, if you can help it, you know, if you're making any big moves, if you got, you know, any big purchases, you know, take your time. And I know time is of the essence and sometimes we rush it or we don't think that we have enough time. And, and honestly, in life, who does have enough time? You know, like who really knows how much time they have? Like, do you have like an expiration date, like on your palm or on your foot or something? Like who knows how much time you actually have? So it's no, it's no sense in saying like, well, you, you can put off for tomorrow, you know, you can put it off to tomorrow because you don't know if you live to tomorrow, you know, but in reality, we still have to hope. And that's where hope comes in. We still have to plan. We still have to believe that God is going to give us the time to get through or do the things that we need to do in life. So um, be wary of any red flags that you see and forgive yourself for any mistakes that you might have made because of red flags, because you trusted somebody with your money, your time, whatever. Um, pay attention to the red flags. And anyway, I will do another video. Um, somebody asked me to do one about red flags. So I will see you later on um, my next video. Subscribe, uh, like the video, comment, whatever. <laughs> All my videos are kosher because I'm doing them uh, right here in front of my Hi. son. So Bye. anyway, <laughs> uh, take care and uh, y'all have a good day. <laughs> Till my next video. Like, subscribe, see you. Take care. He's rocking me. Bye.